What's up, Guardians? This is Eraticus with Uniquely Average Gamers. I am joined by Omega. Hey there. And we are running the summoning pits today, specifically focusing on the final boss encounter, Foga, on Heroic. So before we jump in, I'll give you a little setup. Um, you'll be seeing two perspectives. You'll be seeing mine as well as Omega's as the hunter, um, and you'll, you'll see why in a minute. As far as what I'm bringing to the fight, I'm bringing a heavy machine gun that is arced just because it's my strongest, most rapid fire for those tight situations, and I'm bringing a fire shotgun for wizard shields. I'm also specking into void for the Nova Bomb so that you can clear ads quickly and get back to DPSing the boss. So what you're going to see is that our strategy basically hinges on us all staying on the same side of this boss encounter to keep him and his crit zone facing us at all times. So. When we start this off, what you're going to see is I'm going to run straight in and clear as many ads as possible on my way to the far side of this kind of rib cage like structure you see to your right. Now, we like to rush into this room so that you can kind of get into the position that you want to be before most of the ads start to move on you. So, if you had stayed by the door and just kind of popped in to take out the first few and stayed back, then they start to converge on you in that bottleneck, and you don't want that. Now right here is going to be the sweet spot for me. Uh, I have a view of this ramp right here for when the dropship comes. You can Nova Bomb them in that bottleneck. And you can also keep a good view on the boss to your right and line of sight him with this rib here. Either that one or this one. So now that we've got ads pretty well taken care of, I'm going to walk up here and aggro him, pull him off the chains. Pretty much just getting close to him is what's going to set him free. Now that Eradicus has aggroed the boss, my primary responsibility will be to clear ads. Um, this allows Eradicus and Blue Coat, who's running this with us, to focus on the boss and not have to worry so much about being peppered by ads that are spawning around them. That's why I've chosen this upper level. It gives me great vision of the map. It gives me the really strong ability to call out ad spawns so people know where waves are coming, and it also allows me to react quickly if somebody needs help, front to back, and pickups if someone happens to die. Now that's not to say that it's the perfect spot, um, I just like it. It is a high risk, high reward place to be because there are some pretty serious ad spawns behind you uh, on the platform that you have to be able to manage quickly. Um, but if you've got good team coordination, it works pretty well, uh, and the pros outweigh the cons. I'm running into Gunslinger, uh, and that's going to come in really handy later on because it's focused around fire damage. And we have some wizards that spawn later on that have fire shields, and it's really important to be able to melt through those shields very quickly. It's one of those points where you will probably need an assist from your teammates to be able to clear those adds. But if you call out targets and you get your team shooting on, they melt pretty quickly. So mechanically speaking, this is really the extent of what the boss is going to do to you. Uh, as soon as he looks at you, he'll fire this channeled kind of pulse of void energy at you, which, as you see, it's like we said earlier before, it's easy to line a sight on these ribs. Uh, and then if you're too close to him, he has a ground pound, which you can pretty well jump out of or avoid. Just don't be that close to him. Depending on your play style, you may want to put some more effort into the boss early. Um, totally fine, I'm sure, but as this is heroic, we have put uh, most of our effort into ad management so that we have an easier time later handling the boss. So uh, you'll, you'll see what I'm doing a lot is if I'm not on ads and the boss is too far over there, I'm just shooting him wherever. I'm not looking for the crit zone. I'm really just looking to get his attention off of our buddy Blue Coat so we can get him to path back to the other side.
So this right here is why you bring Solar to a fight, or uh, in our comp, why you bring a Hunter to the fight. Uh, as you can see, I did not have my shotgun loaded and ready for this situation, so I'm pretty much calling out to Omega that the Wizards are here if he didn't already see them, so that we can uh, get their shields down and just burn them. Um, since I didn't have that shotgun loaded and ready, it was just about doing as much DPS on them as possible, regardless of the element type. And that is why Arc Machine Gun was used. So once you've gotten here, guys, it's uh, about halfway through the fight. Things should be pretty manageable up to this point. Uh, after this, you're going to see some pretty heavy ad waves filled with knights and wizards. I got that legendary engram there. To my disappointment, it turns out to be a blue that I immediately turned into weapon parts. So uh, back to this fight, though. It's definitely something you just want to be able to team shot and have your weapons ready to go at this point. You do have a little bit of a reprieve, but things are going to get pretty hectic pretty quick. Also, this is the point where you need to pay attention to the spawns on where I'm standing, because you're going to see a few waves come out of this spawn location up top, and um, if you are not ready for them, it can be pretty dangerous. So you can see here, switch over to my sniper, take the one shot, and then back over, and I'm calling out this wizard shields down. You can see B Rad there helping with the team shot, taking him down, no problem. Just melt those guys. So really guys, if you guys work on your communication and coordination, this kind of setup will allow you to be able to support each other. It's not the only setup by any means, it's just one that we found to be really effective and works well for us. At this point, you know everything that we put into making the fight happen and down the boss, so just make sure, again, it is heroic, so be patient with it. Uh, keep good communication between your team so that you can you know, avoid getting down as much as possible, and rinse and repeat until you've got some loot.
There you have it. There's one dead boss. Some marks, some glimmer, all kinds of stuff. Finally, the abomination has been destroyed. The vanguard will be grateful. A creature of the dark has been slain, and our world spared another atrocity. But how many more hive abominations are still out there, growing among the darkness? I fear we may find out all too soon. Not that I have to tell you this, but make sure after the encounter's over, you run around, check for those engrims you might have missed. There were a lot of ads in this fight, and if you've done your job, then hopefully not many of them made it over to you. So that leaves a lot of open space for these things to have dropped. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed the video. Um, be sure to check us out on Twitter at youaveragegamers. Feel free to leave a comment below. We'd love to get you guys' feedback and uh, the interaction. And we will see you next time.